every meal has a story to tell. That is, if you're willing to look for it. I'm Danielle Pruitt, and I started Wild and Whole in 2016 with the express purpose of redefining our connection to food and exploring the qualities that make wild ingredients so profoundly unique. I'm cooking three different recipes. I am driven by curiosity, and my inspiration springs from harvesting food directly from its source. I've spent the past decade of my life trying to eat consciously, and believe me, it's not always easy. But it's pushed me to search in places I'd never expect for the most unpredictable of ingredients. I want to challenge your perception of what food is, where it comes from, and how those two elements are woven into our lives. Because connecting to our landscape through food means so much more than just the calories that sustain us. Welcome to Wild and Whole Sourced. This is my first trip to Southern California, and the first thing that comes to my mind is sunny weather and even the famous Hollywood white letters, but not seafood. Today, we find ourselves in the heart of Los Angeles on Ventura Boulevard, the world's longest continuous avenue of mom and pop businesses. In between the hustle and bustle of city life lies The Joint, the only commercial dry-aged seafood market in the US. As someone who constantly seeks to learn more about the ingredients I'm cooking with, I am so excited to experience dry aging from Li Wei Liao. He is the owner and chef at The Joint and has mastered this technique. This place is amazing. I have never seen anything like this. You have fish literally hanging everywhere. We're not like a traditional fish market where we have fillets laying on ice. All of our fish are hanging in these coolers in a dry environment. So this is dry, they're dry aging? Yes. Oh my gosh. Can I try one? Sure. I've heard so much about dry aging, but I've never gotten to try it. So this is like an incredible experience. How old is that? This is uh, nine days old. And we're gonna eat it raw? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Dry aging is commonly practiced in the beef industry, but only recently gained mainstream attention by chefs in the seafood world. The funny thing is, the Japanese have been doing a variation of this for centuries. Not only could this be an essential tool for sustainability, but Li Wei's actively challenging public perception that fresh off the boat is best. So Li Wei, this is fresh. This has obviously been dry aged. What kind of fish is this? So this is king salmon from New Zealand. Okay. Same exact fish, a little bit different in size, just different batch. Naturally, this is about nine days, nine, okay. 10 days old and this is fresh. Why would anybody want a one to two week old fish? Like what is happening when you're aging it? So when a fish is fresh, the muscle is, is still in rigor mortis. It's, mm -hmm. The texture is not there. The meat hasn't developed any kind of sweetness, any kind of depth to its original flavor. So, you know, after we hang it for a few days, um, it actually makes it much better that all those flavors come out. I want to try these sure. side by side yeah, and well, really see for myself how cool this is because I've been seeing it all over mainstream um, in the culinary industry, sushi bars, and I have not tried it yet, so I've been dying to, to experiment. Okay, so I'm going to let you smell these fish and let you smell the difference between a fresh fish and an old fish. <laughs> I want to smell the old fish. First? No, I want to smell the fr fresh first. Fresh first? Okay. So you can smell right there inside the cavity. Okay. It smells like fish. It's, yeah, right? it, smells it smells very like, clean. It smells like you have that little ocean. Very ocean. Very oceany. Clean. And then now you smell the old fish. Well, it smells like the ocean clean, but it's got like, it has almost, uh, it is intensely salmon, almost like a cooked salmon smell. But it um, doesn't smell bad. There's no nothing rancid. No, no. Very clean. It smells very fresh, clean, like the ocean. But this has something more meaty quality that makes me hungry. Los Angeles is an international hub for seafood, which is why Li Wei can source his fish from all over the world. No one has more experience with dry aging fish than Li Wei. He's developed not only an innovative way to enhance the flavor and texture of the protein, but also extend the shelf life. So, I will let you taste fresh first. Can I try it? Yeah, go for it. Mm. This is 
like so buttery tender and so clean. It doesn't have like a real depth of flavor, but it is very light. So this is seven, nine days. Nine days, correct. Oh, look, I can already tell my chopsticks are like digging into it. Mmm. The texture's different. Texture's it's still different. soft, but there's like a firmier like bite to it. Right. And it is meatier, but there's more intensity to the fish. Right. You know, we have a term here called fresh is boring because, <laughs> because we, we kind of already know what fresh is should taste like mm -hmm. all the time. It's rather shallow. Um, it doesn't have that depth that you were talking about. Yeah. And this is kind of like even, you know, this is not an extreme aging. This is only what we call like a basic age. I've been fishing recreationally for a while with my husband and I love cooking my fish, but I've never had fish like this and I've never seen it aged like this. And so I want to learn from you your process from beginning to end, um, what happens to get it to this point. So you've got to take me fishing. Okay. You know a guy with a boat? I do. Let's go. Let's go. So how many of these boats have you been on? One, two, three, four of them. Hi, welcome aboard, Jacob. All right, What's up, Lee Wei? It's good to have you, man. Our captain, Jacob, and Lee Wei have been fishing together since they were young. So I had imagined that they've got the chops to put me on some fish. Our first stop, bait. We load up on sardines and squid, known around the saltwater fishing world as two of the most effective baits. We're headed 25 miles off the coast to an island known by some local fishermen as Southern California's crown jewel. Hopefully by morning, we'll be filling up the cooler. Oh, I see it. Oh, he looks like a giant goldfish. This actually is a goldfish. It is a goldfish. Yes, you can catch. No, I'm just kidding. Never. Okay. Imagine though. <laughs> this is actually where goldfish come from. Oh, nice chucklehead. Hey. Oh my God, he's heavy. What kind of rockfish is that? Chucklehead. Chucklehead. So the first thing we'll do is we'll bring spike it. I have a little tool here. What you want to do is you go in between the head. You how you see how he just, just right there that's a spot that just kills it instantly now it's just kind of shuddering and then it won't thrash around in your cooler because okay. a lot of that thrashing around in the cooler actually bruises the fish yeah itself next thing we do is we'll bleed it right here we'll take cutter scissors dikes anything and we'll cut that bleeds Where out the fish it? just the gills we're just oh, severing just anywhere the, in the gills yeah we're just taking the gills and completely severing it Blood is what makes fish fishy. So, you know, we'll go ahead and just make sure those are all nicely cut. We'll let it bleed a little bit more in the bucket and we'll put it on ice. You know, the gas station ice, the cube stuff, it's just not very good for fish. They end up putting dimples in, and, and losing your fish. And also crushed ice, the good thing about crushed ice is it fills all the voids and always make sure you pull your plug in a cooler so the fish is not sitting in water as the ice melts. So alien looking. <laughs> Got you. Oh God. Oh. Uh, Fish on, maybe. Hopefully. All right, guys, watch your lights here. We're gonna be looking around. We're getting the conditions we want over here. We just need to get away from these sea lions. That's part of the game, so keep at it, fish hard. We're gonna make a little move here. So you grew up on the water. Yep. When we were catching so much fish, we had a lot of, you know, I guess material to work with, and it's always been about, you know, different ways of preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, the traditional ways of, you know, you catch a lot of fish on a fishing trip, you kind of put it in the freezer, but, you know, we all kind of know in a freezer, you're, here, you want that in? Oh my God. 
there wasn't like a strong bite to that. Yeah, it was, that was just bite. running. Yeah, that was a bite. Though. Yeah. Little guy. That's California calico bass. Do you eat those or he's too little? They're good eating, but this one's a little too little. Right. That was fun. See ya. Yeah, so, you know, going back, you know, we were catching a lot of fish. We didn't really want to always put things in the freezer, but we want to spread out like our catch, like being able to eat it over, you know, more time, not yeah. just like that day of. It started out with different ways of keeping it fresh. And we started noticing different things. We started noticing that the fish actually start tasting better and better as as you kind of preserve it in, a, in, a, in an ideal condition. Constantly just trying to find that peak of when it's the best. Exactly. You know, after we figured that part out, we were never in a rush to like get home and we had to eat fresh fish that day. Yeah. We, we were actually like, you know, we were actually targeting and be like, oh, hey, we, we actually want to eat this three days from now, four days from now, seven days from now. So Yeah. Are you still experimenting? I mean, even though you've been doing it 20 years and like tons of different fish. Yeah, um, I think we, we, we'll never stop experimenting. We're always pushing the envelope. My take is a little bit different just because I grew up as a fisherman and I had access to fresh fish from the water. Mm -hmm. So my methods are really, you know, applied to fish as soon as it comes out of the water all the way to the table. Now I get to learn how to do this and take better care of my fish at home. Right. So thank you so much for taking me fishing. You're welcome. I'm very excited. Let's keep fishing. <laughs>
No, this is actually really good for the first time. With the fish on the cleaning table, I now understand why Li Wei goes to such careful lengths after the catch. The brain spiking, cutting the gills, the crushed ice. It all makes such a visible difference, not to mention the smell, which is surprisingly clean. I'm proud of myself for trying something new. Suki Biki is not an easy way to scale a fish, but adding a new trick to your skill set, I think is always worth it. All right, so we've cleaned the fish, gutted the fish, scaled the fish, and I know we have to hang it and age it, but that can't be all there is to it. Ideally, we keep it as cold as possible, right around 33 degrees, and the humidity in our chambers are always sitting around 80 to 85% humid. What's the best way to do this at home? You know, if you're doing this at home, three, four, five days is completely safe. Mm -hmm. um, if you can keep it dry like this, it's way better than if you were to keep the fish in a bag yeah. in its own juice and slime. And I noticed they're all hanging upside down. Right. You would always want head side down. That's the way the blood escapes from the fish. This has been a really eye-opening experience that to know that there is a like a solid way to handle your fish from the beginning to the end. So I can't wait to put all this in practice when I get home. Awesome, that's great to hear. Let's hang these guys up. Right, that's the rock cod. And that's the sheep head. All right. Perfect. Once they're in the fridge, we wait for the magic. And all that is, is time. There's an intensified flavor and firm texture to Leeway's final product. It's hard to define because it's far from fishy. In fact, I'd say it's more pure and fresh tasting than ever. And that's when it's served raw. What about when it's cooked? The next day, we head back into the kitchen to get an even deeper immersion because apparently we've only scratched the surface of what can be done with dry aged fish. So what is this? This is striped bass. Nice, it's so red. So vibrant. So this guy is from the sixth, so like eight days. Okay. To break down this eight day old striped bass, Li Wei starts by taking off the head. Doing this gives you a nice even cut on both sides. I find it amazing how blood free this fish is. You couldn't even find a trace of blood if you tried. Li Wei's always meticulous with this fish, but while filleting, his attention goes to a whole new level, making perfect cuts, not wasting any meat, and making sure to remove every last bone. Oh my gosh. I never thought I'd say this, but this is like the prettiest fish head I've ever seen. <laughs> like mine are never this pretty. They're always bloody and gross and like, ugh. Levi's favorite preparation is over charcoal. When he told me this, I was expecting he'd use your standard briquettes, but I was so wrong. This charcoal is called Japanese binchuyutan, or white charcoal. Smokeless and scentless, this pure natural hardwood is able to conduct an intense amount of heat. For dry aged fish, you don't need a complex recipe. The fish itself is already elevated, you don't want to mask its beautiful developed flavor, just highlight it. So the ingredients for this recipe are simply heat and salt. We're not even adding any oil. The skin is so dry that it will crisp before it sticks. And before you flip this, is there something you're looking for? Besides I, a crispy skin? I usually like to take a look at the, the fish fillet. It's all visual for me. I don't time anything, I don't temp anything. You don't touch it, feel for doneness? You can, but usually for fish, it'll, 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 it'll change color. So I'll, I'll watch it and let one side cook about two thirds of the way. About and you can see the change of exactly. it. Exactly, you can see it change. Yeah. It's all too common to encounter cooked fish that's brown, fried, or greasy mush. But this dish is about as far from that as you can imagine. The coolest part of this whole process is that we put no supplemental flavoring on this fish. After dry aging, it's naturally that good. Liwei, I am so excited to try this. Uh, it looks gorgeous. Uh, the raw fish was amazing, but I'm interested to know what this skin is going. It just looks so crunchy. I don't think I've had skin quite like this before. Right, so um, that's the beauty of, of keeping this fish in a dry environment, right? Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful from a culinary standpoint. It, it comes out crispy, oh, I just um, hear it. crunchy, 
and it just, it's like Here, I'll crispy serve you. chicken skin. Oh boy. All right. There we go. Nice job. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is so good. Mm. This is like the best fish I've ever had. I'm not lying. <laughs> the skin is amazing. The texture of the fish is so flaky and buttery, but yet so clean and refreshing. It's just like, it's awesome. Yeah. This is fantastic. I cannot wait to take your knowledge and your practice home and the fish that I caught, I'm going to get to share that with my husband a few days from now. Like I don't have to worry about getting home and immediately cooking it or immediately freezing it. Right, right. That like preservation is just so valuable. Right, and, and that's really the story I really want to tell and share what I, what I know um, with everybody, whether it's a chef in a restaurant mm -hmm. at a mission level or just the home cook. Good fish doesn't have to be intimidating. It could be great if just if you follow just these basic steps yeah. to take care of it. Well, I think what you're doing is amazing. It's innovative, and you're not just changing the seafood industry at a wholesale level, but you're helping home cooks and um, anglers all over the U.S. So I think, cheers to you. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. Cheers. I've always believed that fresh is best. But after experiencing Li Wei's methods firsthand, I've realized that it's not about how fresh the fish is, it's about how you take care of it that really matters. And if you do it right, it doesn't need anything extra to make it shine.